Time now for our Sunday Spotlight, this week on Michelle Ree. An education activist with a knack for drawing attention and controversy, she made the cover of Time back in 2008 when heading the D.C. public schools and left that job under a bit of fire after dismissing 36 principals and ending teacher tenure. Now head of a nationwide organization, Students First, Michelle has a new book out tomorrow called Radical, and she joins us now. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning. So you also have this report card on every state in the nation and how they're doing on education, and you are a tough grader. No A's, uh, a couple of B-minuses, more than two-thirds received a D or an F overall. That is a pretty dismal assessment of where things stand. Well, I think it shows uh, how far we have yet to go. Uh, we at Students First very, very strongly believe that there are no shortage uh, of educators out there who are innovative and wanting to do the right thing. Uh, we also knew, know that all of our kids can learn at the highest levels when they're in the right school environment. The problem is that these uh, educators and kids are trapped uh, in a school system that uh, and a bureaucracy that is really driven by antiquated rules and policies, and so we seek to change those policies and the environment they operate in. But we've in. seen two presidents in a row now who fancy themselves and, and push education reform. So what's the single most important thing that can be done right now on a national level to fix our schools? Well, I think it is focusing on changing those laws and policies. Uh, and, and we think that, th that three different areas are critical. First, making sure that there's a highly effective teacher in front of every single child every single day. Uh, the second is informing parents and giving them options so that no family ever feels like they're trapped in a failing school. And third is making sure that we're using taxpayer dollars wisely uh, and, and we're governing the school systems well. We've also seen that there's been a backlash, though, against how we assess yeah. how schools and teachers are doing. Just this week, uh, teachers in Seattle saying, we're not going to go forward with these standardized tests anymore. A lot of parents resisting it as yeah. well. Well, I think we've got to strike a balance. You don't want uh, a situation where uh, there's an overemphasis on testing. But at the same time, we had decades where there was no accountability whatsoever. And our school system was uh, graduating kids who didn't have basic skills and knowledge. They couldn't read and do math appropriately and at grade level. And that means they couldn't find uh, appropriate jobs. So we have to strike the balance between making sure that we're not overemphasizing the test, but yet making also sure that we're holding kids and schools accountable for what kids know and are able to do. I love the title of your book, Radical, and, and you certainly charged hard in Washington, D.C., made a lot of enemies uh, pretty quickly, and, and some thought you seemed to enjoy the rough and tumble a little bit too much. There was even that, that camera crew that followed you has actually fired a principal. So uh, do you have any second thoughts about the style that you that you showed in D.C.? Yeah. Well, my style is uh, is very deliberative and very um, uh, focused on doing what's right for kids. And so I wouldn't change that so much. But what I did learn about my experiences in D.C. is that what we were doing, I think, were absolutely the right things. Um, I, I needed to focus a little bit more on how we were uh, communicating those things and how we were doing things. So should I have fired ineffective principals? Absolutely. Should I have done so on national TV? Probably not. Bill Turk, the uh, education writer for The Washington Post, who covered you and reviewed your book and summed it up saying you come off as a radical humbled by a dose of realism. Is that fair? <laughs> I think that is fair. I mean, you know, it's interesting because when I first got to D.C., people uh, said, well, gosh, she's so radical. She's a lightning rod. And in my mind, uh, you know, I was doing the things that seemed obvious to me, you know, closing failing schools, uh, removing ineffective people, cutting a central office bureaucracy. Uh, and finally, uh, I came to the conclusion that if bringing some common sense solutions to to a dysfunctional system makes me a radical, then so be it. Okay, Michelle Reed, thanks very much. The book is called Radical. It is out tomorrow.